In today's Sunny Apartment episode, I'm getting rid of the temporary coffee table and building one with a lift-up tabletop and storage space that is perfect to go with the wall bed and sofa system. This video is sponsored by Rockler Woodworking Hardware. I'll post the product links down in the description. The most essential component of this project is this lift-up table mechanism from Rockler that can turn a boring coffee table into a highly functional piece of furniture. After taking some measurements and creating a 3D drawing for the table, I resawed and prepared some hard maple boards. We're getting really close to the end of the tiny apartment series and I think this lift top coffee table is perfect for tiny homes because it has more storage space and is multifunctional. You can work on a computer, have a meal or do a million other tasks right on the couch. I put up a set of plans with all the measurements and cut lists to make your own version of this project. It's great for everyone and particularly for those who already got my wall sofa bed system plans and are looking for a lovely coffee table to match. This thick piece of maple was very flat and well acclimated to my studio, but after the resawing, the hops got both. I'll deal with that in the following steps. I started by cutting the parts close to their final size and flattening the longer boards using the sled method for the planer. My joiner is super small, so this trick is what I typically use to flatten boards that are longer than the jointer's capacity. They came out a lot better. Now I can remove the shims, scrape off the hot glue and clean one face of each smaller board. When running the opposite faces through the planer, I noticed that one of the boards was always getting tear out. So I kept that board about one millimeter thicker than the others and used the drum sander to complete the job. I ran multiple times, lowering the rollers a tiny bit on each pass. I need to glue these pieces to create a wider board for the shelf section of the table. I cleaned all the edges and glued them together using these bar clamps from Rockler, which are some of my favorite and most used clamps for glue ups. While the glue is drying, I can start prepping the rest of the wood by squaring the edges and the ends. About 30 minutes later, I could scrape off the squeeze out while the glue was still rubbery. I chose to keep both the fixed and the moving tops leveled while assuming a line gap in the middle and below the moving one. So I trimmed the area where the lift up top will be located at the table saw and used a few hand tools to remove the material left by the circular blade. Thank you. 
It's time to create a rabbit to receive the bottom of the box. I did that at the router table using my Rockler router lift and fans. The pieces will be joined with dominoes, so I traced where I wanted to create mortises and drill all the domino holes. I made a dry assembly to see if everything was correctly aligned. It did, so I took it apart, sanded all the inside faces up to 180 thread, and began the stressful part of gluing the table. A few hours later, I removed the clamps and squared up the corners of the stopped rabbits. I decided to use the same materials as on the piano desk from my last episode to create more visual contrast. Also, I love to get rid of leftover materials, so this was an excellent opportunity to use some of the remaining grey Valkomet that I had. Unfortunately, the 19mm scrap wasn't wide enough to use as a tabletop, so I cut it in half and added a strip of another material in the middle with a missing width. I found a nice piece of plywood in my scrap library and covered one face with cork. The central strip will protrude about 3mm from the tabletop surface by adding the cork layer. This will allow the Murphy bed platform to rest directly over the cork strip, decreasing the chances of scratching or marring the tabletop and bed platform. On the temporary coffee table I used to place two cork coasters over the table before lowering the bed, so now I have a permanent cushioning surface for the bed to flip over. To simplify this step on the plans, I changed the tabletop into a single piece with a strip of cork that you might or might not want to stick directly to the top. I wanted the cork to wrap around the edge, keeping the protrusion. I found it easier to achieve crisp, straight cuts on the table saw rather than by hand with a cutting knife.
I can now glue the small pieces to the ends of the plywood and clamp them with these awesome bandit clamps from Rockler. I inserted an initial domino to check for alignment on the interior edges before drilling the rest of the mortises. Wow. <laughs> Freaking perfect. Since the Valkyr mat will become almost black after finishing, I decided to dye the cork and apply with strip with black India ink because I didn't want them to have too much contrast. To avoid squeezing glue into the sanded and dyed areas, I applied masking tape to the borders before permanently gluing the tabletop. Still, I got a tiny bit here and there, so I carefully removed it before it was too dry and hard. The lift-up mechanism works best when the top is over 9 kilograms and my top was just over 7 kilograms. So I went to a local store and bought a piece of iron bar that I will now cut in half and attach to the underside. I rounded the edges slightly and spray painted it matte black to prevent it from rusting over time. Yes, it is over 10 kilograms, so it should work fine. I had to trim the insert nuts because they were almost the same thickness as the tabletop and now I can drill holes for them perfectly and vertically with the help of the Rockler Portable Drill Guide. This portable drill guide works with any hand drill and gives you the precision of a drill press anywhere a drill press cannot reach. I love that it also comes with depth stops which allows me to rest assured that I won't drill too deep. Let's finally install the lift-up mechanism. I raised it with a couple of blocks to ensure I was using the max lifting height. I added 15 mm of clearance between the box frame and the mechanism base and screwed it to the blocks. 
This step is quite tricky to get right. You'll probably unscrew and screw the top a few times while making slight adjustments and ensuring the top panel is flush to the box on all ends. Something I did not get about the mechanism is that it has these protruding brackets that prevent the top from sitting flush with the frame and you can actually see marks on the top sender side. Here you see me gouging some material away to compensate. I moved into making the leg base and cut some more hard maple that will later be dyed black again within the ink. The joinery was also made with dominoes and since my leg and long stretcher pieces are so small, I had to use the smallest domino size. I thought it was a good idea to create a double mortise because a single domino seemed too flimsy to me, although it might work just fine. For the short stretchers I was able to use a medium domino size and it eventually got in the way of the smaller ones. I recut the mortises and moved on to make the last glue up of the project. A rabbit was routed along the perimeter for a nice design detail that visually separates the leg structure from the coffee table box. To connect the base to the box I used figure 8 fasteners that in this case were smaller on one side and did fit in the thin horizontal stretchers. I can do a final sanding and apply the India ink to the base frame. While the ink was drying, I could cut a finger pull with a ball and tray router bit. I used Rubio Monocoat oil to finish the table, but unfortunately I had some issues with the tabletop. Maybe I didn't apply as thick of a coat as I should for the grey MDF, so the final look was not uniform. I talked about it on an Instagram post and thankfully I got great replies from you guys and was able to salvage this project by resetting the top to 150 grit and making sure that the surface was evenly coated with the oil. I scuffed the surface three times over every millimeter before removing all the excess with a soft cotton rag. Back at the tiny apartment, I was very excited to make the final assembly. I sprayed the screws black and reinstalled the rocker lift up mechanism and the tabletop. I stuck silicon bumpers below the tabletop to create the desired gap and prevent slam. I also added felt pads below the legs and the project was complete. I love how it came out and I think this is an excellent addition to any living room. The mechanism works really well and the cork strip makes it perfect for the wall bed to rest over. 
As I said before, the end of the Tiny Apartment series is getting closer. Next, I will do my best to create a multifunctional media console to replace this random table. A big shout out to Rockler and all my Patreon members for making this video possible. If you want to support my work too, head over to patreon.com slash gethandstory or visit my online shop. Thanks everyone for watching and go get your hands dirty. Até já.